Hello and welcome to the Hemingway Jones Live Fountain Pen Show. How are you? How are you all? Welcome to our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, and just about everything and anything that will keep you inspired. That's why we're here. Inspiration. We're sharing knowledge. We're sharing ideas we're sharing things that are funny just everything about the whole fountain pen world so i'm very happy to be here also i will want to say as i always do that there is no gatekeeping here and i say this up front at the beginning of the show because it's very very important to me and it's important that you know that it's between you and me i want you to know there's no gatekeeping here I don't care how you hold your pen. I don't care which pen you choose, which ink. I'm not going to criticize your choices. I'm here to uplift you, to keep you writing, to keep you inspired and enthusiastic about this hobby. I'm not here to create artificial rules that you will never be able to meet, because gatekeepers do that. Once you meet their expectations, they're going to move it, because they consider themselves the old guard, and we're not welcome. We're the disruptors, right? We're the ones that are changing the rules, just making it about passion, about fun, about connections. Because I feel like we're building something here, and we have great momentum right now. Meeting a lot of new people, my videos seem to be catching on, so it's a lot of fun. It really is. And the other point I like to make is, I'm not here to sell you a pen. I'm here to celebrate your choices. You buy whatever you like. When I review a pen, maybe maybe it inspires you to buy it. If you do, great. If you don't, great. I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm, I don't care what you buy. I want you to save your money. I hope you're investing. I'm a banker by day. So I really hope you're investing. That's what's important. If you're happy, happy at home, happy with your family, and striving. I see a lot of likes coming in. Thanks, guys. I love it. And a super chat. Thank you. Off, off to a big start with a super chat early from David Bousset. My friend David, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That's very, very kind of you. $20. Very, very generous, Dave, who, who supports the channel in a huge way. And if you enjoy this channel and you want to support it, why not? Become a member. At least subscribe, if you've been watching, subscribe. It'd be great for me to get to know you. So thanks so much, and for the right reasons. We get some characters in the uh, comments sometimes. and it, But it actually inspires me. I think one of the biggest inspirations for certainly the live show are the comments. Because... Um, it just gives you a totally different perspective when you're speaking with that many people all at once. But we do have a really interesting show for you tonight. First, I want to say hello to everyone who's here on the live chat. Because there are people here live. Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern. Eastern Eastern savings time right now. But usually Eastern time. Let's take a look at some of the people here. Sisyphus is here. Who took time out from pushing that boulder up a hill to join the live show. Nice to see you. The mighty Wolf Kate Witch. Who's waiting for her 2024 Lammies to come. Which I don't really like. But you know what, Kate? I'm happy for you. And I hope you like them. And I'll be curious what you think. And maybe at some point I'll have one. Who knows? The mighty Arthur is here. I'd be lost without Arthur. Good to see you, buddy. Who else is here? Chime in in the comments. Lincoln's here. Kaylee's here. I see Linda Thomas. Lots of people. And if you're not here and you're watching the playback, try to be here on a Tuesday night. It'd be great. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching the playback. So hello to everyone. So this was one of those nights where I've been running around like crazy. My banking career has been very, very busy lately. And really exciting, really interesting, really sort of inspirational on its own and motivating. And I've been running around like crazy for work. And then I come home and I eat and I 
get ready for the live show on Tuesday nights and, of course, spend time with my daughter, which is very important. But she goes to bed around 7.40, so it's kind of perfect. I have time to set up, but sometimes I get down here at 5 of, and it's a bit mad. I'm running around setting things up, hoping the audio's okay, hoping I look decent on camera, at least. Have my mint tea, guys. Ah, I need my mint tea to get through the hour. Very nice. So, so really good stuff. Lots of letters going on in our letter exchange. Very good. Okay, so I do want to let you know kind of what we'll be speaking of tonight. So you know what to expect. I like to set expectations early. So once again, coming from my comments, tonight's main topic is on are you cleaning your pen too much or you probably are cleaning your pen too much. And then just so to know that I'm not policing how much you clean your pen, but we'll get into that. And also some of the craziness about cleaning pens that I've heard. Which I want to share with you because fascinating and just so interesting. So I'll mention that when we get to the main topic. I also want to talk about some things that came into the studio this week. The studio. Yeah, this is the studio. Why not? We'll go with that. So some new things, some new projects that I'm working on. And this week's video. This week's video I'm so excited for. I really think you guys are going to enjoy it. This week's video is my top five best blue inks. So very specific to blue. And I think you know that I love blue. I love blue inks. It's my favorite, my favorite color. So it's very specific, a top five list of what my favorite blue inks are. Ooh, I need to recognize the mighty Lad Gardner. Thank you so much, Laddie, my friend, for 25 bucks, a tooth fairy bribe. I appreciate it. You know, my daughter lost one of her front teeth, and the permanent tooth is already coming down, and now the other one is going, and it's being pushed. It's fascinating. Children dental stuff is fascinating. She just turned seven. We had a pizza party for her over the weekend, so very exciting stuff. I'm going to put that back up. Laddie Gardner, 25. Thank you so much, my brother. Always a pleasure. Lad is my therapist. He, uh, he has to listen to me anytime I am complaining about things, which is often. So, yes, blue ink. I'm surrounded by blue ink right now. You guys remember this? We haven't shown it in a while. It's my 100-year-old Egyptomania inkwell, and it's full of blue ink. It's not that full, but it does have blue ink in it. Usually it's brimming, but my, I, what was it, 100 milliliter bottle of a clay de sapphire is finally empty, and it always went in here. I always filled from here. It's very romantic to have an inkwell on your desk, so this one is always here. I'll, I'll give you a closer look. I'd show you with the secondary camera, but I think you see it better like this. It also has something on the cap. Very, very cool. And then I have this inkwell as well, which is empty. But this is very charming. It's a Victorian leather traveling inkwell. And it's labeled ink in case you get it confused with a Cartier ring or something that you might be carrying with you. But you push this little button and it opens up. And it's very charming. And then if you want to get to your ink, where is it? It's over here, right? <laughs> yeah, it's over here. Um, yeah, okay. Let's do that again. Make it a little bit more aesthetic for you. You push this down and it pops up. Isn't that charming? It doesn't hold a lot of ink. And I would imagine you'd put a very narrow stylus, a little quill or um, dip pen in there. But very romantic. Probably be hard to fill anything but maybe a Waterman 52 out of here. But it's so charming. I love it. This stays on my desk. And this is a new acquisition. I showed this last week, but I'll show it again. 
It has KWZ archival iron gall blue black in it. Which, to be honest, I don't think it's over my tea. I'm gonna have to be careful. <laughs> so, I don't want to drink Iron Gall ink, so I'm moving. I'm moving my tea. So I don't know if I want to put this in a pen or not. And if I do, it's going to be something robust and easy to strip clean. So that really goes into tonight's topic. It rolls right in. Hmm. So I see a lot of love for the bottles. Thank you. I love that stuff. If something's romantic and interesting, I just love it so so much. Ooh, can you hear that? That means my hot water's ready. My wife has one of those Japanese hot water dispensers. And when it's up to temperature, it gives you a nice little serenade. Charming. I don't know if it made it over the speakers, but there you have it. Oh my gosh. Vermilion T's here. Nice to see you. We speak all the time in the comments. I know you've been on lives before, but it's very infrequent, so I'm very happy to see you. Welcome. Okay. What should we get into first? I have a list. Let's do a little show and tell. Shall we? I think we should. Okay, so the first thing is, I don't think I've showed you this before, but I bought a uh, Leichterm. This is my first Leichterm um, notebook. And you see, I really haven't done anything with it yet, except take the plastic off. I bought this at the Brookline Booksmith. And if you're from the Boston Brookline area, you know the Brookline Booksmith. It's a wonderful independent bookstore. So I bought this. It's all the fun stuff. I went with a really boring setup with regular lines. Oh, actually, it has a little page number. Oh, this is table of contents. Super fun. And then it's lined. Ooh, ooh, guys, it's so tactile. I love tact. Do you know I love tactile things? Have we spoken about this? Have we spoken about how I'm a little mad about tactile things? I often shop with my hands. I love the feel of something that has a bit of like finish and grain, and this just feels really nice. I feel a little bit of of grain, but total smoothness. So I'm I'm really excited to use this. And you might be asking, what am I going to use it for? I'm not entirely sure, but I have a pretty good idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to what I did in high school. I'm going to try to rediscover writing poems with a pen. I write poems. Uh, I don't share them very often, but I do. And I usually write them either on a computer or on my typewriter. So I thought it would be really nice to reconnect sort of journal style. And try to write maybe a poem a day or maybe try to be a little less ambitious and maybe set aside a little time on a Saturday to uh, write a poem. So here we have it. And plus, I've been spending a lot of time with poets lately. And I'll tell you why shortly. So I'm really excited to use this. It's really beautiful. It's portable enough, but it's rather large. But I like this format. Here, I'll show you with me. So you can get it in perspective. So it's, you know, it's rather large, but it's light enough. And it's a really nice gray, which I liked. I almost went with the red, but I decided to go with the gray. So I'm pretty, pretty excited. Pretty excited. So I see the puppet, puppet access is here. I want to, I want to. I'm going to call out Puppet Access in a very sincere way and thank him for sending me a Hongdian 517D, which I just reviewed and will be up on the channel at some point. Lovely pen. Very interesting pen. There are a few things, but totally happy to have the experience. So thank you so much, my friend, for sending it over. Also, my birthday is 517. 
So it's kind of an interesting coincidence. This pen is the 517. So pretty exciting. Pretty, pretty exciting. So let's do a little bit more show and tell. Shall we? Okay. So Lystrom, you guys know what this is. Probably a little anticlimactic for you. But I like it. You saw my Hemingway Jones, Hemingway Jones, Ernest Hemingway notebook. I haven't used this for anything. I don't know if I will. I think I just want to own this. I don't think I actually want to use it. Sometimes you just want to own something. You don't necessarily want to use it, but it's really cool. It's really um, interesting how it's filled with actual photos. This would be a fun travel journal. It's kind of a rubberized cover. The Finkavisia in there. There he is. There he is. The older Hemingway. I always I always hoped I could grow a beard like that one day, but I barely shave now and I'm almost 57, so I don't think that's gonna happen to me. I'm about this Hemingway. This is the Hemingway I am right now, I think. I think you can measure your life in Hemingway's, but then his life stopped, right? At some point. In his 60s. I think he was 61. That's really young. But he looked older. They lived harder in those days. Like, he might have been my age in this pick. But they had harder lives than we do. So there you have it. Okay. So which pen did I use today? I used the Scrivener. I still pick up the Scrivener quite a bit for work. And I used this today at the office because I wanted a business pen. A very, very business pen. And so I picked this up. I love that you can just uncap it. And just as a reminder, they sent me this for free and I discovered I really liked it. I was surprised. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I do. They do spell Scrivener weird. Kind of forget how it is. It's Scrivener. <laughs> I kind of forget. I think it's like this. It bugs me when you spell things wrong. But a very nice pen. You can see it's incredibly smooth. As I false start it. But that's me. That's not it. I mean, this, this line couldn't be any wetter, to be honest. And this is a very lush medium. Here's a concept for you. It's a concept of your true handwriting. So this is my handwriting, but I'm trying to write very legibly for you. But if I were taking notes that no one would ever see, it would be like, Something like. Like that. That's that's kind of your true handwriting. So this is what you're struggling against. Your actual handwriting that you would in a hurry write quick note that's that's who I am right there see this is the veneer so this is my education and my life experience this is the Philadelphia me this this is the guy if you cut me off in traffic suddenly my language is peppered with expletives this is a beautiful cup of mint tea on a lovely Tuesday night sharing fountain pen knowledge with you all. But I consider this sort of my true self in a way. My true handwriting. And I think everyone should know what their true handwriting is. It's how you write in an extreme hurry. That's who you are by default. As a penman ship person. <laughs> That's your true penmanship. Okay. So, true handwriting. It's a new concept. I just made it up. 
But I think it's true. And I think it reveals something about each of us. It's sort of this unabashed in there, slightly artistic. I think it's even still stylized. The one thing when I write really fast like that, I don't lift the pen. I don't lift the pen off the page. So I'm usually writing like this. But imagine if I wrote like this for my videos. It, it wouldn't be much, it wouldn't be very aesthetic, would it? But there you go, my true handwriting. I wanted to share it with you. I like to be myself and share things completely with you all. And that's my true handwriting, excuse me. What's your true handwriting? Tell me about it. Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the comments. What are you hiding? I'm sure it's something. So the Hungdian 517D came, but I'm not going to show it to you because I'm going to film with it. I want to save it as a surprise. It's pretty great. And a subscriber to the channel, who I don't want to say their full name, but their name is Steve, and then a last name, who was briefly a member of the channel too, sent... A whole box of inks pretty much their whole ink collection it was surprising like a whole ink collection showed up one day it took me like two weeks to open it but I opened it I was a little worried it was jingling like broken glass you know when something arrives it's like making that noise but surprisingly it arrived in one piece but so thank you thank you for that 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 came into the studio the library this week John Manuel is doing a Tom Wolf. So John Manuel is learning Spencerian for everyday writing. Like Tom Wolf, the writer of Bonfire of the Vanities. He I believe he wrote in Spencerian. I could be wrong. Hmm, Tom Wolf, guys. Huh. Tom Wolf. I'm gonna write that down. Why am I gonna write that down? Because I put up a video last week, famous authors and their fountain pens. D have you seen it? It did rather well. It did better than I expected. And I was really happy to have some great conversations with people. There were some criticisms that were valid. And I'll get into that in a minute. But there was mostly praise. Uh, overwhelming praise, which I appreciated. I think we were able to share something really interesting, and this is going to be a series. In fact, I've already written the second one, and I'm going to film it in the coming weekend. So there's going to be subsequent chapters of famous authors and their fountain pens. So at some point, you might see Tom Wolf on there. So I, I do want to mention one of the criticisms which I thought was valid. Um, a lot of people pointed out that there weren't any female authors on there. And it's it's true that there weren't. And there was a reason there wasn't. Even though I didn't really think of any kind of distribution of who I was choosing at the time. When I set out to do it, I simply took writers that were handy. They were the ones that I had most recently read. And I looked at two that, that happen to be female authors and chose not to do them. Although, there'll be subsequent chapters. So, one was Donna Tart, who I really wanted to do, but at the time, my research wasn't complete. My research is now complete. So, I'll put that out there. And the second one was one that I knew about, and that was Anne Frank. And... As much as I, I love Anne Frank, I love the story of Anne Frank, but I just, I didn't feel like I could do it 
justice. I, I just, and it all hit so close to home having a daughter myself. I just, it was so emotional. I don't know if I could handle it. So I think I'd love to do it at some point soon. But I just emotionally wasn't ready for it. And I just didn't really think of that in that way. But there are future chapters. Because I love a lot of women writers. I just like great writers. I mean, I wish Mary Beard wrote with a fountain pen. I just finished Mary Beard's latest book, Emperor of Rome. And I, I love it. I love Mary Beard. I felt like I was hanging out with a friend. Who was telling me about Rome. That's what's great about Mary Beard. A lot of those books are written by professors. But they're written by their grad students. And the professors kind of put their names on them. That happens a lot. I believe. Not that book. That book was just infused with Mary Beard. It was her voice through and through. And it was so good. And so interesting to have that chat. So I really think it was a valid criticism. But I think if you are interested in female authors, as I hope you are, then you will see some being featured in, in future chapters of authors and their fountain pens. The next one is epic. That's all I'm going to say. I mean epic. But I was very happy. I was very pleased that we were able to share all that together. I I really enjoyed it myself. I loved making it. And I loved talking about it. And the craft of that video was interesting because it was a little different. It was a little bit of a departure. It was more documentary style. But this season, guys... On the Hemingway Jones channel is going to be very much like that. There's going to be pen reviews that have mini documentaries in them. There is a whole nother focus of famous blanks and fountain pens that's coming very, very soon. That's going to knock your socks off. There are deep dives into inks that I think you're going to adore. There are pens that are so fun. There's so much coming. There is one epic pen review that was right in front of my face for months, and I've never done it. I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to love it. Puppet Access says, uh, don't hate me. I just can't read fish fiction. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm similar to you in that I don't read a lot of fiction. I don't. I, you really have to convince me that your world is real. Like the secret history. This book is so immersive and so wonderful. It's one of my favorite books. It's just the best description of really bad people. But done very sympathetically. And in an interesting context and an interesting story. It didn't break the spell, this book. But for me, once I can get a glimpse of the writer where I see that they're projecting something or it, it throws me out of the story. Or if there's a, some kind of anachronism thrown in, especially with figures of speech. A lot of modern language is used in historical fiction. It, it, I'm done. I, I, it throws me out. Uh, another great story that was completely immersive and just perfect was Caleb Carr's The Alienist. Very good. But, yeah, I'm like you. I read a lot of nonfiction. I mean, you can see behind me, there's a lot of nonfiction. So, yeah, I'm glad that we're on the same page. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. And I think you'll love part two, which is coming very, very soon. So I have some more show and tell for you. More show and tell. I'm only going to show this briefly because you're going to get a full video. <sighs> what do you guys think of this? So, vintage pen, right? Look at that. Vintage pen. Lever fill. Or is it a vintage pen? Gold nib, right? 
So some of this might actually not come across, but, oh, I think you can read that. Do you see Conway Stewart? The pen is mightier than the sword. So yes, I've opened the Indiana Jones pen. <laughs> so this is the Conway Stewart. Series 58. Fine nib. Fine. It's a fine nib, as I'm, I like to say. It's just a fine nib. Indiana Jones. Okay, so let me tell you a quick story. This is the Indiana Jones pen. It's the recreation of the one that was used in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. It basically has vintage specs. I'm not going to get too much into it because you're going to get some videos on it very, very soon. But I'll tell you a story about it. Conway Stewart sent it. And I looked at the number. And I realize they make a lot of these things. But it was number 2 of 500. And it was the pen is mightier than the sword. Which I quite like the quote. I like the scene from the film. And in the end, they don't send me these pens for free, guys. They sh they should. <laughs> That's so awful. I'm a bit of a narcissist. So can we share that? Can I just be honest with you guys? I think you know. You know, I've, I've mentioned this before. That my whole channel, my whole personality, everything is based on self-loathing. There's a healthy dose of of self-loathing that everything I do is bad and that I, I need to be better all the time that there's huge I live like neurotically full of self-loathing and egoism and narcissism where I feel like why why doesn't everybody love everything I do and I can't reconcile those two I hold these disparate ideas in my brain at the same time somehow and they battle back and forth and I'm in the middle like oh, I don't know just leave me alone but uh, you know it would be nice to have like a pen that I could really hold on to and then you know keep posting on it for years like I do the ones I own so it would be nice if they gave me pens but they don't they send them and I send them back which is fine they're lovely people it's fine. So, uh, but I saw it was number two of 500. And I said to my wife, honey, I'm so sorry. I, I can't, I can't, I can't let this one go. I can't let this one go back. I need to hold on to it. And my wife, of course, who's lovely, just so supportive and wonderful. is like, oh yeah, you need one of those anyway. I have the full Indiana Jones kit. How can I not have the official Indiana Jones fountain pen. Right? Am I wrong? You guys are saying nice things about my struggle. Thank you, Randall. You're very, very, very kind. Lad says, it's almost like you're a human being. Yeah, maybe a very flawed one, Lad. I appreciate that. You, you're very kind to me, but you know how hard I am on myself. I mean, I am so hard on myself, guys. If you think you're critical of me, any criticism you have of me, I've been through it. That's why comments don't hurt my feelings. Believe me, I am 10 times more vicious with myself. But I had to buy this pen. And here's the really lovely thing. Alistair, if you guys have ever done business with Alistair of, of Bespoke Pens, British Bespoke Pens and Conway Stewart, he is such a great guy. So, so nice. So lovely. I said, how much would this cost if I kept it? <laughs> you know, And he gave me a price and I was like, I'm keeping it. So, so there you have it. So if, if later on you say I'm a shill because of this pen, I bought it. Okay. I bought this one. I just really love it. And I've been writing quite a bit with it. Okay. 
Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the main topic before it gets too late and my voice goes, right? So this, um, it got me thinking about cleaning pens because I just feel like, I feel like we all, and myself included sometimes, clean our pens so much. So much. And is it really justified? Do you really need to clean a pen as much as you, as you do? And you probably don't. And I'll give you some reasons why. I've had pens that I didn't clean for years. Literally. My Mont Blanc 149 had Mont Blanc Royal Blue from the day I bought it until about three years ago when I changed it to Yamabudo. In that time, in that decade that it had Mont Blanc Royal Blue in it, I probably cleaned it once. Yeah, probably maybe twice. Tops. Because I put blue back into it. And I just... It it worked perfectly. And it the ink flowed beautifully. It never had an issue. Part of the reason why I'm such a Mont Blanc fanboy is... I bought a lot of pens that have let me down. And I spent a lot of money on pens that would be hard starters or they'd skip. And it was just so frustrating. But this one pen my wife bought me that was pretty expensive, though less so than they are now, always wrote, always wrote in a lush ribbon of, of liquid blue. Just a gorgeous streak across the page anytime I asked it to. And it was absolutely brilliant. So I never had an issue. I never thought, oh, maybe I should clean it. I just didn't. I didn't. I never changed the ink. And in my head, my trigger for cleaning is normally when I change inks. But I don't always do that either. Sometimes, and especially when I'm at work, I have two bottles of ink at work. I have a bottle of Jair Bonicle de Saphir, which I have around me. It's always around me. Somewhere around me at all times. It's my baby blanket ink. Ooh. I like that. I'm going to... Okay, anyway. It, it's my baby blanket ink. It's my comfort ink. It's my mac and cheese ink. I know we said that about pens. Why not inks too? So I have that at work and I have Waterman Serenity Blue. Sometimes I have a black pen that runs out at work. I don't go into the kitchen, fill up a cup of water and clean it. I don't. I dip it into the to the uh, ink and I fill it up with blue on top of the black. And if there's oxblood in it, I fill it up with blue on top of oxblood. That's what I do. And it doesn't give me any problems. And it gives me an interesting mixed ink. And I don't always know what that is. And I enjoy it. And it just doesn't bother me. It just, it, it doesn't it doesn't bother me that the inks are mixed. So what triggered this whole conversation is that someone in my comments is using an ultrasonic cleaner for their pens, which is fantastic, just fantastic. And it would be so handy for me, who has literally my entire ink, my entire pen collection is inked just about. Or 70 to 80% of it at any given time. And I have over 100 pens now. That's not that many compared to many of you. But I would say probably 70 of them are inked. Because I film so much with them. And I'm always filming disparate things. Different things. And I, I need to have them actually filled. Sometimes I try to fake it by dipping them. But it, it the versimilar two doesn't hold up. You got to ink them. So, I ink, I mix, 
and I don't mind. In fact, I'm going to explain this one technique that I do with mixed inks. I, and I'm not even going to put it off. I'll just tell you it right now. Okay? So this is something I do, and it's something that I suggest you do. Because it's super fun. And it's the coolest shading ink you've ever used in your life. And this is what I want you to do. Either buy the short international cartridges with these inks, or just use your ink syringe and fill up a couple. Okay? The first one is a clay de sapphire, and the second is oxblood. Use a pen like your Kaveco Sport. It's a good pen. A bigger nib, a broad or a medium, is more fun. Okay? Put in your clay de sapphire and write with it a sentence or two. And then take it out and put in your oxblood. And then write with it. Your ox, your a clay will go to oxblood. And then as soon as it hits maximum oxblood, pop out the oxblood, put the clay back in, and start writing. Now it'll gradually go from oxblood back into that beautiful sapphire blue. As soon as all the oxblood is expunged and it's pure blue, do it the other way. Swap it out again, and it shades back. I do this in my journal quite a bit. So basically you're journaling with your Kaveco Sport and two cartridges. And it just makes this beautiful, gradual shading that goes down your page, totally controlled into that ink. You can do different colors. I'm just suggesting these. These are the ones I generally do. You can do black into blue. You could do orange into green. You could do whatever you want. There's going to be that point where it's the pure color, where it's the mix, where it gets fainter and fainter and goes back to the next color. You could then go to a third color. You don't have to go back and forth. You can have a lot of fun with that. Now, this is something I've been meaning to film. The problem is, it would be very, very difficult for me to film this. I'm going to at some point soon, but it's going to be a very big file because it takes a few minutes each color. So I'd probably have to sit there and write out something for a good half hour or 40 minutes to get the effect of a few colors. And I wish I could pull my journal out and show you, but I can't because it's full of my private memories and thoughts. But try it if you have it. I mean, maybe I, I'm not looking at the comments, but maybe you guys are saying I do that all the time. But I'm going to come up with a term for it. I don't think anyone's done it ever. Oh, I like this comment. This is the best show ever. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for the likes, too, guys. I see all the likes going up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ombre writing. I like that. I like that. We could coin a term for this. Uh, John Tower. Ultrasonic can damage pens. It, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, and John Tower, one of the funny things is when I read that about the ultrasonic, what I was thinking about was an autoclave, right? Or autoclave. I'm not sure how you say that. I've only seen it written down, and I'm not a dentist, so I'm not entirely sure how it's pronounced. But I'm going with autoclave. Um, can you, I can see people putting their Mont Blancs in an autoclave, you know, which probably goes up to like 200 degrees, and it comes out, and it's melted. But it, it just seems like we're going to extremes, and I think, I think that it's sort of the influencer culture that's driving people crazy with cleaning your pens you just don't have to clean them that much you can if you change inks you want a pure color clean it by all means and i'm going to tell you my preferred method of cleaning i obsess over every little detail if you watch my coffee video you know this to be true i think i have a clean yeah i do how to clean a pen video maybe i'll do another one I haven't done it in a while maybe i'll do another they're fun you get a lot of like drippy noises it's very asmr but um I'll tell you my technique in a second. But if you care and you don't want to mix inks, or if you want the pure expression of an ink, by all means, clean, clean away. And of course, if you want to clean your pens every time you use them, be my guest. I love ritual. Ritual is part of this hobby. It's fun. If you enjoy the act of cleaning, clean, clean away. 
But if you're under the impression that you need to clean your pen like every month, you could go years. Nothing's going to happen. Unless you clog it with glitter. If you have a glitter bomb in your pen. Or if you put something like, you know, archival ink in that's very stainy. Well, okay, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about all the very gentle inks. The Oxbloods, the Diamines, the Gerbons, the Montblanc inks. The non-glitter, non-goopy inks. The, uh... Pretty straightforward ones. That's what we're talking about here. You just don't have to clean your pen as much as you do. I've heard somebody give the advice that you should clean your pen once a month or whatever. You know what? If you want to, knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. But you don't have to. I wait years. Nothing happened. Hmm. Elizabeth Pilgrim says... When you get a new pen, do you clean it before filling it with ink? Yes! That is the one time I do clean my pen. So thanks for mentioning that. If you ever get a new pen and you get really excited and you clean and you fill it, excuse me, you fill it, you often go to write with it and it'll skip or it'll hard start and it just kills that pen for you. Forever you're paranoid. The one time I always clean a pen is when I first get it. Always in quotes, because sometimes when I film, I do pull one out and I just fill it. But I prefer to clean them first. Because there are sometimes manufacturing oils and residues that get in pens. I heard that one of the issues with one of the Mag 600s is that there was a bit of debris in the feed. And that was causing the issue with the pen, that particular pen, being a slow starter. One of, someone in the comments, I wish I could remember their name, took it back to the factory in India. So, fantastic uh, bit of reportage there. Um, I'm just telling you what they said. So, yes, when you first get a pen, it's always a good idea to, to, um, to clean it. And some pens you need to be very careful cleaning, like the Mont Blanc Boheme, which has a mechanism that probably has oils and things in it. It's not a pen that you want to immerse in water like that. Ogiva that I put in water for the uh, thumbnail of this video, which is fine, by the way. Um, that's, that's a lovely pen. We need to do more with that pen. But okay, so now I want to tell you how I clean my pens because I don't want to forget. I think my method's pretty good. For one thing, I hear a lot of people saying, I can't believe you use tap water to clean your pens. Guys, we're putting inks in these things. Do you really think water is a problem? What do you think ink is made out of? You know, like I only use distilled water, you know, use distilled water, use any kind of water you want. Fantastic. If you have a high mineral count in your water and it's just hard water that stains everything and yeah, maybe you want to avoid it then. But if you have normal water with the normal pollutants that's in the poison water in the United States of America, because all of our water is poisoned here, as you guys know. But um, just use it, you know, you'll be fine. So what I do is I take a cup and I fill it with water and I put it at the edge of my sink. And then I expel out some ink and then I wash the nib with the faucet, shut it off, and then I fill it from the cup. So I'm always putting fresh water in and the nib is rinsed so it's not putting any ink into the cup. So then I take it out and then I expel it into the sink and then I rinse the nib again and I put it back in the water and I fill it up again. And I usually do this five, maybe six times. And by the time that's done, it's clean. And do I ever sometimes disassemble it completely? If I use shimmer inks, if it's um, a shading ink that gets kind of goopy and like a Twisby, I'll field strip it sometimes, but mostly that's all I do. I mean, with a piston fill, you can't even see how dirty it is inside. It gives you the illusion of, of cleanliness. So that's enough. And I just think this sort of overcleaning, obsessing about cleaning, it's not that healthy. I've never used a pen flush in my life. But then I don't restore vintage pens. I've seen vintage pens at uh, estate sales that haven't been 
fixed in any way and they still have the old style inks that were permanent inks and they're just clogged and you know i guess if i had one of those i'd probably soak it in water for a couple days and hope it dissolves but some of those inks weren't necessarily water soluble so then maybe i'd use a pen flush or something but i don't do that with your regular inks, your oxbloods, your diamines, your Ferris wheel presses that aren't shimmery, and, and others, water's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Relax. It's okay. Your pen is fine. Your inks are more likely to hurt your pen than anything else. But not your good guy inks, like Jay or Bond. Those, those, those inks are the best. I love them. Hmm. My tea got cold. It's kind of a shame. It's really good though. The other thing too I want to mention is, have you ever done this? Have you ever obsessively washed or cleaned your pen hoping it would fix a problem? Your pen doesn't write. It's hard starter. So you, you wash it. And then it's still a hard starter. So you empty the ink, you wash it again, and you think it's going to fix it. It's not that. It's the nib or the feed or, or something else. It's not. It's clean. You cleaned it. You did a great job. You did it once. I'm speaking to me. I actually can see myself while I talk. It's a little spooky. Um, I've done that. But you don't have to. You're good at what you do. If you've cleaned your pen, it's as clean as it's going to get. Don't clean it multiple times. And don't use an autoclave. Maybe don't use an ultrasonic either. I, I don't know what it does to your pens. Water's enough. Soak it if you need to. Shane has it right. Shane is disassembling his pen every time he writes a page. I, I brought this up because it almost seems like there's a school of thought that's a bit like that. That's why I brought it up. So, yeah. Now, here's another time you definitely should clean a pen. I don't always do this. But I'm going to tell you that you should do it. If you're putting your pen away for a long period of time, you really should clean it. Some pens will surprise you how they write out of the out of a box after a year or more. I've had pens like the Cartier Diablo. I've had my um, some of my Caveco Sports that I don't use very often will write first time. Uh, some pens will dry up. Usually snap caps dry quicker in my experience. And then everything inside of it dries. But not a big deal to clean it. You just rinse it with water. You're back in the game back in the game john taylor hemingway can read our minds on pen cleaning <laughs> i don't know about that i certainly know my own mind and i know i'm a little obsessive and i think that we are we all share similar traits don't we in this hobby of ours so i don't know guys just enjoy the hobby try not to get too carried away with the obsessiveness of it all if you enjoy it, you enjoy the rituals, um, then by all means. But you can have a lot of fun mixing inks. Try that cartridge trick. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's amazing how quick you go through a short cartridge too. But if you do it strategically and you look at how you write and if you change it just at the point where it's that color alone and then you swap it out, it's so cool. It's so fun. And if you do do it, let me know in the comments. Or, or email me. I have an email. I'd love to hear from you. So really fantastic stuff. So this week's video is my top five best and favorite blue inks. Right on point. I think you guys are going to like this one. It was a lot of fun to make. And it's uh, got some pretty incredible B-roll. So I think you're going to enjoy it. I really do. Vermilion T says, with old quink, you can always use more quink to dissolve it. You know, I have old quink. I have two bottles from the 1940s of quink ink. 
Uh, I should show you guys them sometime. I'll try to remember that. Because that would be fun for you to see it. So if you've reached this point in the video, won't you subscribe? I'd love to have you along on this journey with us. And you seem to like this content. Although one person didn't like the content. They gave me a thumbs down. They had lots of thumbs up, but one thumbs down. I guess they don't like my my swapping out cartridge technique very sad and also if you want to support the channel even more you could become a member join our pen pal group it's a lot of fun i've been writing quite a bit well ladies and gentlemen i can't believe it but it's been an hour it's been a long journey simon krupa says subscribe if Simon says, you have to do it. You remember Simon says? Simon says. So thank you. So some pretty great stuff coming up on the channel. I can't wait for you to see this week's video. Next week's video, unbelievable. We have so many coming up. And my wife made me promise not to tell you what the long-term ones are that are coming out. I don't want to give away too many secrets, but I get so excited. I can't wait for you guys to see them. So I, I hope you really enjoy them. I really do. So anyway, I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. We'll see each other again on Thursday with a new video. So I hope you check it out. And join me next Tuesday night when we're back here for another exciting live show. So let me say hello to Fountain Pen Therapy, who says I don't watch his videos, but I do. Thank you. And Inked Happiness, hello to you. Thanks for everything. Love you guys. So everyone, thank you all for being here. Thank you to all the great members. And we will see each other again very soon. So take care.